Yo, what's going on YouTube? In this video, I'm going to teach you six tactics that pro players abuse and that you need to implement into your game as soon as possible. Let's get into it. All right, everybody. So first off, if you guys are not already subscribed to this channel for any Apex Legends tips, settings videos, or gameplay videos, then do so right away because it's going to make you a better Apex Legends player. It's 100% guaranteed. Also, I do stream on Twitch and play with subs every Sunday, so if you want to hop through, the link will be in the description. Without further ado, guys, let's hop into the tips. Now, unfortunately, I only have this one clip shown in the background, but it's still a great example. So let's explain this tip a little further, okay? Normally, once a person is knocked, the other teammates will A, thirst the person instantly to try to shield swap or just kill the person in general, or B, they will leave the knocked person alone just to die on the side. Now, if they do choose option B over here and decide to leave your teammate alone, or an enemy player for that matter, that player will most likely have their knockdown shield out at all times in order to prevent getting thirsted. This is when this tip comes into play, okay? You see, even if the enemy player or your knock teammate doesn't know it, by holding out their knockdown shield, they're giving you more cover than you had before. Using this wisely will help prevent bullets and can act as a nice head glitch if you utilize it correctly to your advantage. Alright, so the second tactic that I want to talk to you guys about is the portal technique towards endgame, okay? This is obviously only going to work if you guys have a wraith on your team, but it is still really effective. So in this first clip I'm about to show you guys, there is a wraith portal, and where I'm shooting on the ground there, that is where we're going to pretend the end circle is at, okay? Now there's two methods that... Well, normally the casual player will do method number one, okay? Now, method number one is going to be called the straightaway method. All right, so what exactly is the straightaway method? This is going to be when a wraith makes her portal, okay? Pops her ultimate ability and makes the portal directly to the end circle without doing any crazy movements, doing any circles, just straight from point A to point B. And what this is doing is it's actually minimizing your time in the void, okay? You can make your time in the void a lot longer by doing more movements, and you guys can probably see where this tip is going to go. But what casual players will do often is they will just go from point A to point B, and this is actually making it a lot easier for you guys to be shot once you come out of the portal, okay? Because the enemies know exactly when you are going to exit the portal, right? They're going to be looking at the end, and it's actually putting your team at a severe disadvantage okay like i said earlier let's say a team is above you and you guys or let's say we're above a team right in this clip shown in the background i'm showing you guys from a little from a little block and we're obviously above what the final zone would be okay let's see your team and the other team have to both rotate right so you're going to want to pop the portal and instead of just going straight away from point a to point b what you guys are going to want to do is method number two which is using every single ounce of like of the portal to get yourself there you know how the portal has a hundred percent uh distance you guys want to utilize that maximum distance so that you're not getting hit by the storm once you're rotating in if that makes any sense obviously like in all my other videos i encourage you guys to comment down below if you guys have any questions about any of these tactics because i know some of them can get a little confusing to the casual player All right, everybody, trick number three or tactic number three that a lot of pro players use that casual players don't utilize enough is going to be zipline tricks. Now, you obviously don't have to be Pathfinder until the last part of this tip, but I'm going to be showing you guys as Pathfinder the whole time, and I'm going to show you a little bit in third person too so you can see what it looks like from an enemy's point of view if you are using these zipline tricks that I'm about to explain. All right, so I'd say about 95% of the casual community would be doing this first thing, and that is just gonna be riding the zipline straight across from point A to point B without doing anything special in the middle, okay? You hit your interact button, you get on the zipline, and you just ride it, right? And what this is doing is it's actually gonna get you lasered off the zipline from anybody with decent aim. If you run into a good player, they are going to melt your face off on this zipline okay i'm telling you right now if you try to take a zipline from point a to point b against a good player there's no chance you're making it across because they're just going to laser you the recoil in this game is not that difficult to control and a lot of people do know it very well so it's going to get you killed a lot of the time trust me guys do not be riding ziplines straight across 
All right, so your next question is probably going to be, all right, smartass, what do I do on the zip line? Because all I used to do was ride it straight, and you're right, I was getting lasered most of the time. And one of three things that you can do on the zip line. Now, the third one is going to be with only Pathfinder, but the first two you guys can do and put into play right after watching this video and you should honestly go practice in the firing range right after this video number one is going to be jumping on the zip line okay so how you're gonna do this is you're gonna hit your jump button and then attach to the zip line over and over again okay so obviously I'm on Xbox my interact button is my X button so I'm gonna hit my X button then once I'm riding the zip line for about two or three seconds I don't really know it doesn't have to be a certain time period but you just hit your jump button right after that and then in the interact button again so for me on on xbox i'm hitting the x button to interact then my jump button is a so i'm just hitting x then a then x then a over and over again to keep jumping up and down on the zip line what this is going to do you guys are going to see it in the background i have my pathfinder in third person so you guys are going to see exactly how much harder it will be to hit you especially if you're aiming getting aimed at from the side it's going to be really difficult to hit you when you're jumping up and down on the zip line all right so the second method that you are going to want to be utilizing on the zip line is jumping side to side you're going to do this very similarly to the jumping method okay what you're going to want to do is hit your jump key or jump button or whatever you're playing on and then you're going to move left and right in the air to avoid more bullets okay now obviously you can't move left and right at the same time while strafing in the air it's just not possible you can only pick one way so how we're going to do this is we're either going to pick left or we're going to pick right and we're going to jump and move our left stick or our a and d keys in that direction okay if it makes any sense you guys are going to see it in the background in third person obviously with pathfinder and you can see it is a little bit more difficult to pull off but if you can pull it off then you're going to be harder to hit than if you were just casually jumping up and down on the zip line all right so the third and final zip line trick that i have for you guys today is going to require pathfinder and it's pretty self-explanatory pretty easy to manage on this one honestly it's just jumping off the zip line and then grappling back up to it with pathfinder so all you're going to do is hit your jump key or your jump button on your controller and you're going to fall down from the zip line then you're going to hit your tactical button tactical ability and grapple back up to the zip line what this is going to do is obviously it's going to give another aspect to your zip line jumps that the enemy is not going to be expecting okay they're not going to expect you to fall off the zip line and then grapple back up to it they're honestly probably going to stop shooting at you when you do this and it's going to buy you a lot of time especially if you're low on health it's going to give you the best opportunity to avoid those bullets All right, so the fourth tactic that a lot of pro players utilize that you need to be putting into your game directly after watching this video is to start carrying more grenades. I watch a lot of pro players and they'll have thermite gra grenades, they'll have arc stars, they'll have frag grenades in their inventory and most of the time, honestly, I don't even pick those up because with the recent uh, nerf to the backpacks or whatever you want to call it, it takes up a whole space to carry one nade. Now before these were super OP, you could carry two per nade and it can honestly hold up I don't know how many nades you could hold you could probably carry around 30 nades if nothing was in your backpack except grenades but now grenades are more crucial than ever because you can carry less of them okay so what you're going to want to do is carry I would say two to three nades at all times and what this is going to do is it's going to do one thing mainly okay that's going to stop passageways okay it's going to block off areas from enemies entering and it's just going to buy you more time in general let's say if you need to heal let's say if you need to run let's say if you need to even push these are going to help you tremendously and just keep in mind what type of grenades that you are using okay so we'll start with frag grenades so frag grenades are basically going to be used you just got to remember that they blow up in the air and they're cooked grenades okay unlike arc stars frag grenades can explode in the air but arc stars have to touch a surface and then they start getting ready to explode so you just got to use those wisely also with thermite grenades they can be used to block vision they can be used obviously to burn people they can be used at doorways to go under the doors there's so many uses for grenades that you guys really don't realize until you start picking them up and using them effectively another few good uses for the grenades would be number one caustic if you have somebody in your caustic traps and you're playing him you can obviously just throw a ton of arc stars or thermite grenades at the people because they're going to be moving a lot slower. Same as 
Same thing goes with Watson and the same thing goes for Wraith portals. At the end of the Wraith portals, if you're taking a portal and you think an enemy might be following you, toss a couple Thermites on the ground or toss a nade on the ground. It's probably going to kill the person when they come out of the portal. Alright, so the next thing I want to talk about is the movement side of Apex. Now, I've talked about movement so many freaking times in the past, guys. I have a whole video that I recently just made on movement, so I'm not going to spend the most time. If you want to go watch that video, then I'll link it in the top right. You can head over there and watch my basic movement techniques to keep you alive. Little guide that I made about two weeks ago or so. But anyways, number one, what people usually do, newbie players really, casual players, they'll stand still when they shoot. This is a no-go. This is not what you want to do. What pro players are going to do is one of three things, okay? Obviously, strafing. We have strafing, which is moving left and right to avoid enemy bullets. We have the strafing crouch, which is going to be used to avoid, obviously, even more bullets. And this is going to take a little more technique. But if you can get it down, you're going to get hit less and less. And another thing that I find really, really effective is looking away while reloading and sliding side to side is going to save your life so many times. Before, I used to just reload and kind of just strafe back and forth. Obviously, just looking at the enemy, make sure, making sure my aim wasn't going off him. But I realized that I was getting hit less and less if I reloaded and looked away from the enemy and just ran for a second side to side. So give it a try. Let me know in the comments if you guys do this too. And I'm 99.9% I'm .9 positive that enemies are going to hit less bullets on you if you do this method. Alright, so this last one, a lot of you guys are not going to like to hear, and that's why I kind of left it as, you can call it a bonus tip towards the end of this video. A lot of pro players are so good, ready for this kicker, because they play so much, okay? A lot of pro players have thousands, if not tens of thousands of hours played in Apex Legends. So, realistically, let's say I am a casual player, right? I play like one or two days a week for like three to four hours maybe. Re like realistically speaking i'm not going to be anywhere near as good as a pro player is so if you guys want to get better you're gonna have to put in a lot a lot of time okay if you want that 20 kill badge if you want that 4k damage badge you guys are gonna have to put more than two hours a week into the game let's be real here you don't get better at anything without practicing so obviously uh if you have the time get into the firing range get into the live games start grinding start pushing people start going for kills and that's the only real way that you guys are going to get better you're not going to get better by it you can watch all the tip videos in the world but you're not going to get any better at the game unless you actually are playing the game so i hope you guys enjoyed these six little tactics that pro players utilize that you guys need to implement into your game right after watching go do it right now go do it right now you click off this video like the video all right subscribe to the the channel and then go do these things right now i guarantee your game is going to improve and you're going to come back to the comments thanking me later anyways i hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day it's been sweat i will catch you in the next video peace out